Hi everyone. Today we'll be having another example on pile foundation. This time determining the allowable load the pile that can carry. We're given a concrete pile having a length of 16 meters. You see this is our pile. This has a length of okay, the length of the pile. The pile has a cross section of 458 millimeter by 458 millimeter. So it is a square pile which has a length of four, a width rather of 458 by 458 millimeter. The soil or the pile is embedded in a saturated clay. So the soil is clay and this is saturated. So with this, we can say that our evaluation is undrained condition. Having an undrained cohesion, we're given an undrained cohesion of the clay, which is 60 kN per meter square. So this is C sub U equal 60 kilonewton per square meter. In some books or in some um, calculation, this is SU. Okay, but in our case, we use CU. The unit weight of the clay layer is given to be 18 kilonewton per cubic meter. And this is considered saturated unit weight. We're given a factor of safety of 3. Now we're asked to determine the allowable load on the pile. So the allowable load on the pile is the sum of the point bearing, Q sub P, and the frictional resistance or Q sub S. Q sub S, sometimes it's called side resistance, skin friction, yeah, or frictional resistance. So the total load in the pile is our Q. It can be ultimate or it can be allowable, but this time we're asked to solve for the allowable capacity. And we know that the allowable capacity is the sum of the point bearing capacity plus the side or the skin friction divided by the factor of safety. So the factor of safety is given to be 3, which is the typical factor of safety for, pi, uh, for pile. Rather. We just need to calculate Q sub P and Q sub S, or the point bearing capacity and the side capacity. We will use two equations for the determination of Q sub S. We have the alpha method and the lambda method. But for the point bearing capacity, no equation is uh, required or given. And based on our equations uh, in the book by Das and Sibakugan, where we can use a formula of or derived by Meyerhoff, we can use Q sub P for this one is for saturated clay. Q sub P is N sub C, which is the bearing capacity factor, multiplied by undrained cohesion C sub U, and the area of the pile tip. So the bearing capacity is based on a certain figure derived by Meyerhoff, 
And sub C is 9. So we can simply say that Q sub P for saturated clay could be equal to 9 by C sub U by A sub P. So we can use this equation. This can be found in the book by Bass and Sivakugan, page 662, which is found in equation 18.17. Okay, for the alpha method, we know that the formula for the alpha method, let me just write here on the side, which is Q sub S equals summation of the frictional resistance multiplied by, this is the general formula rather, P change in length but since we are we have a homogeneous um, layer we may just consider the total frictional resistance and the total length of embedment so for alpha method f is equal to alpha c sub u while for lambda method, the average frictional resistance is equivalent to, let me move, the average frictional resistance would be equal to lambda multiplied by the average overburden pressure plus 2C sub u. We're in sigma sub O is the overburden pressure average, and C sub U is the undrain cohesion. So these two equations or these two methods are used for clay soils or saturated clay soils. Okay, so let us now solve first for the point bearing capacity using the equation derived by Meyerhoff. Solve for Q sub B, which is equal to, so let us say this is part A. Q sub B is equal to 9, C sub U, A sub B. All the equations or all, all the parameters are already given. C sub u is 60. Okay, we have 9 multiplied by 60. This is in kilonewton per square meter multiplied by the area, which is, this is in millimeter. So let's use meter. This is 0.458 by 0.458. This is in square meter. So the resulting value of the point bearing capacity is in kilo newton. And so the answer is after calculating, this will give you 113.3 kilo newton. All right. So let us now solve for, let me just write it here, for the alpha method to solve for the side capacity, we have F first. F or the frictional resistance is equivalent to, well, let us directly solve for Q sub S. As in the point bearing capacity, we have Q sub S equals, this time it becomes alpha Cu. Okay, this one, the F, and we have the perimeter and the length. So since we are given a homogeneous instead of delta L, which you can just use L instead of summation of uh, uh, this value, can just have one layer. So this is alpha Cu perimeter times the length. So the length is given, we can solve for the perimeter. Cu can be found 
or can be obtained from this graph, from this given graph here. I mean alpha rather, CU is 60. So alpha value is a function of undrained cohesion. So from the figure, our CU is 60. Let me just use another color. And let's say this is 50. And this is 75. This is 75. Our CU rod again is 60. Yeah, 60. So this is 75. This is about 60. Okay, if we okay, get this value here, so we can approximately get an alpha equal to 0.77. Okay, so for, for CU equals 60, Alpha is 0.77. Okay, so from here we can now directly solve for the side capacity, which is equivalent to 0.77. Cu is 60. This is in kilonewton per square meter. Perimeter is four times the width, or yeah, the section, which is point. 0.458 this is in meter multiplied by the length of the pile which is 16 meters okay so the resulting value is in kilonewton and that is equivalent to 1 3 5, 4 kilonewton. So since we already have the point bearing capacity and the side capacity using the alpha method and mayor hope, we can now solve for the allowable capacity which is equal to Q sub P 113.3 plus 1354 divided by the factor of safety of 3 and we can get an allowable capacity of 489 kilo newton. So that is the answer for part A. Now for part B, we can use the lambda method. We'll be using the same Q sub P, but this time We solve first for Q sub S using the lambda method. And the formula for the lambda is, the general formula is still the same. We have here summation of F, P, and L. So for Q sub S, we have P, L. And this time we get the average skin friction using the lambda method okay because f average is equivalent to lambda multiplied by sigma sub o prime plus 2 c sub u all right sigma sub o is the overburden pressure and cu is still the cohesion so in our case, for the lambda method, we need to refer to a certain figure here to calculate or to determine the lambda. Oh, sorry. Which is a function of the length. So from here, for, sorry, for length, which is equal to 
the length of the pile is 16. So for L equals 16 meters, you can refer to this table. Here's the 16. So this is 15. Okay, so very close to 0 0.205. So let us assume this is approximately equal to, but you can use the interpolation. And you can get an approximate value of 0 0.20. So we already have this one. Slump the value. Then we solve for the overburden pressure. And we have to get the okay. Let's say the average direct directly solve for the F average. Let's solve for F or the frictional resistance, which is equivalent to lambda, which is 0 0.2, multiplied by the overburden pressure. We have a unit weight of 18 and a length of 16 and we get the average pressure so when you say average okay I cannot draw it here so this is the increasing pressure and we have zero pressure here and then the maximum pressure here divided by two so that would be the average overburden pressure so Sigma sub O is 16, which is the, or gamma, which is 18, multiplied by the length of the pile, which is 16, divided by 2 to get the average, plus 2 multiplied by our cohesion, which is 60. Okay. So from here, you can solve for the average skin friction of 52.8 kilonewton per square meter. So from here, you can now solve for Q sub S, which is equal to F average 52.8 kilonewton per square meter multiplied by the perimeter, which is a scale 4 by 0.458, this is in meter, and a length of 16 meters. So from here, you can solve for Q sub S, which is equivalent to 1,548 kilonewton. Therefore, you can solve for the allowable pile capacity, which is... Q sub P, which is still 113.3, plus a Q sub S for the lambda method of 1548 divided by the factor of safety of 3.0. So the allowable capacity based on the lambda method and the Meyerhoff's method is 554 kilonewton. Sorry. Okay, that's it.